Hello. In the comments sections of my previous videos about a click type torque wrench, some viewers accused me of spreading misinformation. One of my claims is that when you hold the click type torque wrench anywhere else than the handle, you will alter the torque delivered to a nut or bolt compared to what torque value is set on the wrench. In this video, I will present the theory behind how the click type torque wrench operates how we will affect its performance by holding the wrench not by the handle, and we'll do an experiment to test this theory. First, I will take apart the torque wrench to see how it is built and how it operates. The click type torque wrench is the most common tool used to deliver specific torque value to tighten bolts and nuts. To take this wrench apart, I loosen the internal spring tension by setting the wrench to the lowest value. Then I remove the clip that holds this pin here. This is the pivot point for the set of levers of the wrench. At this point the wrench breaks to let us know that we have reached desired torque. Inside we have this short lever. Taking apart the handle with set screw. This screw holds the locking mechanism. and the locking mechanism is out, the handle itself. The spring pressing plunger is held by a pin in this slot. I remove the pin. And the plunger. the spring, and finally the clutch. In this case it is small metal cube. How it works? By setting torque value on the handle we push the spring against the clutch mechanism. When we apply force to the handle gradually we reach a certain point when the clutch cannot hold any longer pressure from the spring, and it gives up. The cube turns slightly, short lever moves inside the main wrench tube, turning at the pivot point, and the wrench clicks. The more we compress the spring, setting more torque value on the handle, the more force is required to overcome the spring force to operate the clutch the more torque is delivered to the bolt or nut. It doesn't matter where we hold the wrench, the torque required to overcome the spring force will be the same. When we hold the wrench closer to the pivot point, we will need to apply more force. Please note, I am talking right now about the torque value delivered to the pivot point, but the torque wrench is set of two levers. The first one is from the pivot point A to the middle of the handle. The torque MA applied to point A can be expressed as the cross product of two vectors, the distance vector LA and the force vector F. The second lever is between the bolt or nut turning point B and the pivot point A. The torque applied at the turning point B, where we fasten the bolt or nut, can be expressed as the cross product of the combined length vector LA plus LB and the force vector F. From the first equation, 
force F is the torque MA applied at the pivot point divided by the distance LA. From the second equation, the same force F is the torque applied at the turning point MB divided by combined length LA and LB. Since the force F is the same force in both equations, we can write this equation. This way, at constant force F, we have variables torque M and distance L expressed with such equation. Let's apply real values here. The torque wrench is set to 47.4 newton meters. It is our MB. The distance LA between the pivot point A and the middle of the handle is 41.2 centimeters. The distance between LB between the turning point B and the pivot point A is 3.7 centimeters. Question. What is the torque that will overcome the spring pressure inside the wrench at this setting? We can calculate it from our equation. Torque delivered at point A is equal to LA times MB divided by combined distance LA plus LB. When we plug in actual numbers, the specific torque wrench set at 47.4 newton meters on the handle will overcome the internal spring tension at 43.492 newton meters. The torque value delivered to the bolt or nut, MB, is equal to MA multiplied by combined distance LA and LB divided by LA. When we change the distance LA, or in other words, hold the wrench anywhere else but the handle, we will also change the MB value and alter the torque value delivered to the turning point. You can see it clearly on this graph and in this table. The first column shows the distance LA, the first value at the handle. The second column shows the calculated torque value at the bolt or nut at the turning point. The first value shows that holding the wrench at the handle, we deliver the torque to the nut or bolt precisely what it is set at the handle. Holding the wrench closer to the turning point, closer to the nut or bolt, we actually increase the torque delivered to this point. Now, let's put this theory to the test. For this purpose, I made such a stand. The torque wrench set to 47.4 newton meters. To verify torque delivered to the wrench turning point, I use such a digital torque adapter that will register and hold on the display the torque value at the moment the wrench clicks. We have to take into account precision of our tools we use for this experiment. The digital torque adapter accuracy is plus minus 1% and the torque wrench accuracy is plus minus 4%. I did my best to apply the force perpendicular to the wrench length, but keep in mind the wrench is moving during the test and it is just a few degrees off, so we lose some degree of measurement accuracy here. I made measurements at three different points on the wrench. At the handle, when LA is equal 41.2 centimeters, at LA, when it is equal 22 centimeters, and at LA, when it is equal to 13 centimeters. I took 10 measurements at each length and averaged the results in this table. Holding the wrench set for 47.4 newton meters by the handle 
I received 47.8 newton meters. At 22 centimeters, the torque increased to 49.84 newton meters. And at 13 centimeters distance, 54.83 newton meters. When we compare our results to the calculations, we should get 47.398 newton meters at the handle, 50.807 newton meters at the 22 centimeters, and 55.87 newton meters at 13 centimeters. The numbers are off due to accuracy of the torque wrench, due to accuracy of digital adapter, and being slightly off the right angle applying the force. But even in such imperfect conditions, we can see that the torque value delivered to the bolt or nut increases when the distance to the bolt or nut decreases. Just for the final remarks, use a torque wrench only to tighten a bolt or nut, never as a breaker bar. Apply steady force until the wrench clicks, otherwise you can over tighten the fastener. Release the spring tension for storage, setting the wrench to the lowest value. If you need to use extension to increase the wrench capacity or to reach a nut at an angle, see my other video about torque wrench extensions. Do not break it. Fix it. Make a heart wrenching comment. Happy wrenching, everybody.